Welcome back to Inside My Library. My name is Joe Bradford, and today's book is The Worldly Philosophers by Robert Heilbroner. And if this is your first time coming to my channel, I do book reviews on Wednesday under the hashtag Inside My Library. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe the video and click notifications so that you can get the updates for all of the new reviews that come out every week. This book, The Worldly Philosophers, is probably one of the most widely read texts on the history of economic thought that was ever written. The author uh, starts his introduction by saying, this is a book about a handful of men with a curious claim to fame. By all the rules of schoolboy history books, they were non-entities. They commanded no armies, they sent no men to their deaths, they ruled no empires, and they took little part in history-making decisions. As a few of them achieved renown but not one of them was ever a national hero, and a few were roundly abused, but none of them was ever quite a national villain. Yet what they did was more decisive for history than many acts of statesmen, who, although they basked in brighter glory, often more profoundly disturbing in shuttling armies back and forth across frontiers, and more powerful for good and bad than the edicts of kings and legislatures, and that is this, they shaped and persuaded men's minds. He also says they can be called the worldly philosophers because they sought to embrace in a scheme of philosophy the most worldly of all of man's activities, and that is his drive for wealth. So at the end of the introduction, the author asks an interesting question, and that is, why is it that after 6,000 years of recorded history, there were historians, there were political thinkers, there were artists, there were scientists, there were statesmen, by the hundreds, if not the thousands, but there were no economists. The first chapter goes into that a little bit and talks about the economic revolution. We're then taken through the lives of these worldly philosophers and the events that shaped their thought. The author explores the lives of prominent economists all the way from Adam Smith in the 18th century until 1953 when he wrote this book and published it. Coincidentally, he wrote it while he was a grad student studying economics. So why were there no economists? Well, because economics as a discipline was not possible in societies that were solely based on tradition or solely based on authoritarian rule. It wasn't until the market system came about, markets were kind of freed from the, 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 the control of tradition or authoritarianism that economics make any sense. And since until that time, land, labor, capital really had no modern meetings. This book is a useful book. It's simple, it's comprehensive. It gives a great explanation of the ideas of the great economists. Heilbronner places their concepts in their proper context. He explains how their philosophies evolve along with historical events. The premise is simple. What is the philosophy behind gaining wealth and maintaining it? Uh, readers will find a basic explanation of capitalism, socialism, communism and related topics. You'll talk about prosperity and depression and poverty and the practical workings of economy through the lens of history and philosophy. And that brings up a very good point or a very important point, And that is warning, this is not an Econ 101 book. You'd be better off reading Economics, A User's Guide by Ha Jun Cheng, or even better yet, picking up a college textbook than trying to learn all about economics from this. But Granted, this book is older and maybe outdated in some areas, and the author, according to some, has made unforgivable omissions. Nevertheless, it's a good book to start with for an overview of the political, social, and ethical concepts of economic thought. I thoroughly enjoyed this, and it was actually first recommended to me by my good friend Ismail. And uh, as you can see, I bought it cheap at half price books. You'll find it everywhere that you can get books as it is one of the one books that has really not gone out of print since that time. So if you've read this book, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Tell me what you thought. Tell me if you recommend a different book or think that there's a book that might be better than this one. And I will see you next time inside my library.